lifestyle's been freezing cold Like the diamonds in they chain, no lab grown stones Jimmy Boy and Ben Baller sit on the throne They never sold shit clone, get your ass on That bullshit is for the rodeo, it don't belong Blowing on that donut beat pack from the biggest bone From Cape Town to Ace Town, they hold it down Internationally respected, you see the crowns Dust brothers and theme kings, we all hustlers Been rolling like Jimmy Boy was feeding customers Cold as ice at the block, coming cop from us Well as podcasts in the world that can't fuck with us Lifestyle we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, man, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we're setting the price This lifestyle we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we setting the price, let's get it what up, what up, what up, everyone, man? I'm charged up. You are tuned in to another brand new episode of the world famous Cold as Ice podcast. This is not behind the baller. This is not BTB. It's all good because I brought some weight with me. 28 karat gold, okay? My man, Jimmy Boy, you already know the deal. Guys, you are listening to the CAI Cold as Ice podcast coming to you live from Hollywood, California. I am your co-host, Ben Baller, a.k.a. The Wash Lord, a.k.a. Back Nine Ben, a.k.a. The Korean John Daly. On the other side, down south, we got my man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know what it is, man. Mr. Jimmy the Gent, a.k.a. Jimmy Boy, a.k.a. The Hustler Choice, live from the gridiron in A-Leaf, Texas, also known as Southwest Houston. What it do, everybody? How's it going? Guys, this show is brought to you by BetterHelp. And on top of that, this show is brought to you and produced by none other than the world famous, the podcast producers of the year. That'd be the Dust Brothers, Miles yes, Davis, sir. Jordan Winter, uh, original the theme, best. theme song and music by Illegal Cartel. Listen, before we get started, uh, there, there's a, a fuck it. I, don't, I mean, Jimmy should tell you, Jimmy, what's going on in Houston, bro? Man, so you know, if y'all don't know, which y'all should know, you know, we had a, a hurricane recently. Uh, hit landfall Sunday night, and uh, it's pretty crazy out here. We got over 2 million people without power, some people without water. Um, damn near my whole family don't got no electricity. They all, we got a refugee camp going on in the crib right now, but it's it's really bad, man, right now. <laughs> it's uh, Ho Chi today, Minh in that motherfucker, bro. <laughs> for real. Um, you know, the news said so far, Centerpoint Energy said that uh, 680,000 uh, houses have been restored, but there's still about almost two million more people that are out without water right now. So it's 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 pretty crazy out here right now, man. It's it's pretty much like ghost town type, you know. And gas stations running out of gas. People kind of freaking out, man. And people not prepared for this, you know what I mean? But uh, we making it work. We blessed, you know what I mean? And um, we're gonna do what it do, man. We're gonna make it right. Yeah, we almost we almost missed out on recording. Uh, uh, internet went out on Jimmy. He couldn't record last night. We couldn't record. We couldn't stream or nothing we couldn't even do facetime yeah the cell the cell phone service is real bad yes sir yes sir you know yeah, i'm glad mean? your but, family okay bro mm -hmm. we praying for everybody out there you know and uh by the time this airs you know anybody that still don't have electricity there's a lot of cooling stations you know you follow my ig i post a lot of places that y'all can go cool get drinks and water anything that uh can help anybody you know what i'm saying uh hopefully by this uh by the time this episode airs everybody got electricity back you know what i mean but we praying, you know, everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be good, man. And uh, we're going to keep pushing. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever compare yourself to other people? Does social media play a part in that? What do you do when you get caught up wishing your life looked like someone else's? Comparison is the thief of joy, and it's easy to envy other people's lives. It may look like they have it all together on their Instagram, but in reality, they probably don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so you can start living your best life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash cold as ice today to get your 10% off with your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash cold as ice. Are you good, bro? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, bro. But I'm good. I'm making it right, man. But, you know, how about you, bro? You good? You straight, yeah, man? Straight, you know bro. what I'm saying? I, chilling, I know man. you we had got, a... We got... I know you had a little action, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, you know, a little hot thing, you what? know what I'm saying? Like, 
hit you up the other day, about? you know, before the hurricane, you know what I'm saying? That little action, man. Oh, oh, girl in the DMs? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to hear something funny? What? I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you if this shit's ever happened to you, bro. Yeah. Remember, I used to be a complete, I was a dirtbag before uh-huh. I was a married man, right? Yeah. So you seen how, on a one to 10, how bad was old girl? Or how bad is old girl? I, I got a good, I got to put her up there. You know what I mean? At least 9.5. I ain't even going to lie to you. I was about to say, she got to be at least a nine, dog. Yeah. Everything, right? No, definitely. Everything. Face card. Mm-hmm. I don't know her personally. Cherries, I'm sorry, baby the, girl. The, the, I don't know you personally. I'm just saying. I'm just but, saying. I'm yeah. talking about just off of just off of the appearance alone. Yeah, off the she vision. Bad one. Yeah, off the vision. Yeah. So you. she had been sending me messages since like 2018, 2021, mm-hmm. 2022, 2023. So I seen this girl follow me. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Fuck this. I'm opening these DMs. I'm like, yo, goddamn. I'm like, <laughs> why are you trolling me? You know what I'm saying? You don't think I'm cute. She's like, I think you're so cute. And I was like, okay. And I was like, whatever. So we start talking a little bit on the chat. And um, I was like, uh, yo, man, um, this is my number, though, if you ever in L.A. And she's like, yeah, you know, um, I lived in the Bay for a long time. And um, I'm now, you know, in AZ now. So I was like, okay, cool. So uh, she texts me and she's like, hey, it's me. And I was like, all right, cool. What's up? And she's like, you know something funny? And I was like, what? She's like, I met you a long time ago. And I was like, you did? I was like, shit, my memory recently ain't that good, but someone as bad as you and like her oldest picture is like 2018 or 19. So I don't like, I don't remember this chick at all. So mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, where I meet you at? Dead silence, no reply, no nothing. She didn't send me a DM, whatever, like some pics, random things here and there. Two days go by, I hit her back. I'm like, yo, like, no, for real though, where I meet you at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, wh- where did I meet you? And she said, nothing. Bro, Jimmy, uh, dog, you got to tell me if this ever happened to you, bro. Do you remember, that was 15 years ago, dog. Remember we was in San Francisco partying. I was hosting a night with uh, Christine Mendoza and uh, all the import models. Yeah, 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 I remember. This is right before I met Nicolette, dog, dog. I done smashed this broad, bro, and don't even remember her. I remember you was trying to rush back to the room. I, I do remember that. You was, you four, was rushing four back minutes, to the room that night. Three minutes, maybe. Yeah, she she had her friends downstairs still waiting on her. I was like, nah, just come for a little bit. I was done already, bro. It was a pump and run. It was done. But have you ever ran into a chick that was bad? And then she was like, oh, we done already hooked up. Like, this has actually happened to me like twice now, by the way, bro. Has that ever happened to you before? Uh, unfortunately, and I don't, I don't know if the unfortunate means it's good or bad, but I haven't experienced that yet. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> You know, maybe one day. <laughs> All right, guys. Guys, uh, moving on. We got fan questions. Let's get into fan these fan questions, question, guys. Fan questions. Let, look, we're going to get right the fuck into it. Let's okay. Get jiggy. All right. Um, hey, hey, Jimmy, how do you pronounce H U Y N H in Quinn. Vietnamese? How do you pronounce that? Quinn. Quinn. Like Win, but with the H. You know what's funny? Win. Yeah, because I always thought it was Win, and then my friend name was Michael Win, whatever. And mm. I just found out something funny, Jimmy. There's only like 11 Vietnamese last names, surnames. I didn't know that. Yeah. And that's why there's so many Nguyen's and all this and fan and all that. Okay. I don't know. It might be 13, so, but it's very little. Mm. Um, Long Huynh writes, what's good, Ben and Jimmy, the gent? I got two questions. First for you, Ben. Um, so I don't know if you heard Fanatics bought out Tops. I guess Tops said there's gonna be re- they're going to be releasing unlicensed NBA Tops Chrome cards again. And because there's no big rookie autos in any of the Panini products like Wemby, Brandon Miller, et cetera. So I was wondering if Tops Fanatics reach out to you to do a collab with the NBA uh, Tops Chrome. Second question. Well, here, I'll answer this part. Bro, um, I knew about that way before, and that's why my deal ended. And now um, you actually are wrong. So Fanatics owns the NBA license. They just can't start their uh, NBA cars until like 25 or 26. I forgot what it is. I think it's 2025. So not until next year, which means it won't come out until 26 for the NBA full license and stuff. As far as I'm reaching out, no. Um, but they got the NFL. They got NBA. The, the Tops has nothing. In fact, no, they got baseball. Sorry, uh, Tops does. But Fanatics has everything. So Panini's a wrap. Panini's going to have to start um, dropping cards with uh, no jersey numbers and shit like that. That shit is weird to me. But um, I I was in talks with Panini with um, some basketball and football shit. But tell you the truth, I'm more interested in doing some golf shit. So that might crack. I don't know yet. But anyways, okay, second question for Jimmy is, Jimmy, boy, when you was trapping, what was you moving the most? 
how much was you paying for it and how much was you pro- profiting? And do you think that you ever touched a million dollars? The fuck, dog? Did, are you the feds? Are you the FBI, bro? Like, <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> Jimmy, it's so, up to uh, you to add, if you want to answer this. Yeah, I, I can answer it. Uh, I can answer some of it and most of it. You know what I mean? As far as um, the most... I was really messing with, you know what I mean? Like I was fucking with the pills a lot, you know, pills. I, I swear I really um, got my name, you know what I'm saying? Pill Gates, you know what I mean? Um, but the thing was, you know, I stopped fucking with pills after what I kind of pills, my fake Jimmy? case. Ecstasy pills, MDMA, kind of pills? methylene, okay, ecstasy, dioxy, okay. methamphetamine, the real deal, you know what I'm saying? No press, no step, mm-hmm. red, that pure, that pure, pure, you know? And um, Before the fentanyl was invading the systems. Way you know before, I'm, I'm like, talking this, about, no I, was- I stopped selling pills after 2001 you know what i'm saying like i i had caught a fake case um yeah. i was able to beat the fake yeah. case literally and um i told myself i promised myself i wouldn't touch pills anymore in that situation you know what i mean but that's what really you know made my name and i got my name out there in the streets you know what i mean you know i fucked with other things too and fucked with the green um you know but i always told myself like I had to make a certain amount of money. I always made sure that, you know what I mean? I was the type of person where it was like, I'm not here trying to sell a thousand pounds a month and make 50 cents off each. I'm going to sell a hundred pounds a month and make a thousand off each. You know what I mean? That's what I was about. I made sure I knew my value and my time and I knew what I was marketing. Everybody knew that what I had, I stood by it and it's always going to be good. And um, that's why people wouldn't have paid the price that they were going to pay. So even my way out the door in 2000, 17, 18, I'm still getting a thousand a pound profit, you know what I mean, on whatever I'm moving and selling. Um, if I touch the bill, sh- I touched the M when I was 17 years old, you know what I'm saying? I touched a couple of times, but I also lost it. So, you know, with that being said, it's just like, I'm not glorifying this. This is just my story and this is what it is. Um, but, you know, just make the right moves and it's a learning process, man. You know what I mean? He finishes off saying, hey, I got a question for both of you guys. If I have 25,000 cash, what's the best thing to invest for passive income? Um, long, I'm going to say this, bro. If you're talking about long bread or you know long term thinking, I'd invest in some stocks that were you know you just know were solid. I know it's the basic stupid shit, but like would it be Tesla, Apple, things like whatever. I know it's high, but it's like things that you think ten years from now are they still gonna go up? Now, of course, if you invested fucking twenty five thousand in Netflix in two thousand fucking ten, bro, do you have any idea you'd be a fucking you'd have a hundred million dollars or no a quarter billion dollars right now? So mm. really. Stocks are how motherfuckers really eat. You know, I've always had money in gold. Gold's a little high right now, you know. But Jimmy, you got any other tips you think you could ask? You could you could uh, add to that or no? Yeah, um, I, I agree with you. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I went, uh, like when I was younger, I wish I knew the things I knew today. And one thing I want to remind all y'all right now is about the word investing. You know what I mean? Like, um, when you say you have twenty five thousand to invest, that means you have twenty five thousand that you're ready to leave somewhere for a while not like you got twenty five thousand stacked up saved somewhere um you got to have your bills you gotta have money coming in and everything and this is money that you're willing to put into something and give it time and let it grow may take a year two years three years ten years and things like that you know what i mean so remember that like if you don't have money put up for your everyday expenses in life and you know uh passive money you're making you don't have 25 to invest. You know what I mean? You got 25 saved yeah. up for emergencies. We talking um, about 25K park, bro. Yeah. And um, I'll say that was like um, one way back in the day when I first got into like saving and stuff like that was crazy was because I was just buying gold on the streets. You know, gold is high right now, but, you know, a lot of people will come across gold and sell it and, and you know, either be happy with selling it for cheap because they might have got it for had it a long time ago and selling it for cheap. So if you like, got a hustle mentality and you around people, you know, you buy gold here and there and build it up. You know what I mean? That shit going to be more money. But honestly, my experience and what I would do now with 25,000 is, is stocks. You know what I mean? Like, um, ETFs, you know, like S and P 500, things like that. And if you leave that there, that shit's going to build up and it's going to build up as you go. I wouldn't even throw the whole 25. I'd maybe put like five and do 500 a month. No, I mean, we're talking about spread around Roth IRA. Yeah. Yeah, Everything, spread that shit know, around. Definitely, though. definitely. Okay. Um, next question. This one is probably the best question. I'm not bullshitting you right now. This is probably the best question that I've fucking read 
ever in any fucking fan questions. I'm talking about I've done a hundred of them over the five years of having a podcast. Okay. Brooklyn A writes, what's up, Back Nine Ben and Jimmy the Gent? I want to get your Mount Rushmore of celebrity crushes back when you guys were in your childhood and teenage years. <laughs> or Ben, were there any Korean celebs that you had a crush on back in the day? Bro, this is fucking amazing. Now, Mount Rushmore, I don't know. Now, I think my first crush when I was like eight years old was Blondie, Deborah Harry. Like, I love me some motherfucking Blondie, right? Um, Between her and Wonder Woman, Linda Carter. Wonder Woman, wow, man, dog. When you see Wonder Woman, I know it's way too old for you, but she was like, wow. Right. And mm-hmm. I think it turned into like Heather Locklear later. But as a teenager, my crush growing up, bro, was Alyssa Milano. I was like, that was it for me, bro. Alyssa Milano was the apex. And the crazy I was part like, is everybody's bro, in 1990. Like, yeah. In 1997, who's the boss? All that shit. In 1997, I ended up dating Alyssa Milano. <laughs> and went on a few you dates lucky with her, bro. bastard. That was crazy shit. That was some fuck yeah, you. That was a crazy thing. Um uh it's funny you say Korean celebrities. Uh you know what? Yeah, in my early 20s, Hyori Lee was the one. Jimmy, who who's your celebrity crush uh back when you was a kid? Bro, like your top 4. It is crazy. I, I like I don't know if y'all can zoom in later like when you ask these questions, like I kind of got lost. Like I started daydreaming right now, you know what I mean? But um Bro, yeah. like growing up, bro, like um, I you know I I'd, I'd say like celebrity crush wise, like growing up, I I can't remember the last one I can remember of, you know what I'm saying? I'll never forget when Crucial Conflict came out with that song. Hey, you remember that song? Yeah, come on, man, Chicago, bro. The, In bro, the Chicago, video, they, they, they was from that area. So yeah. I remember back then, you know, videos were were cassette, you know what I mean, like VHS, man, and and I had the video on this VHS, and I played this video, and there's this scene where they're in the barn part and there's everybody dancing and there's this, she looked like she was probably Latino. And I'm telling you, this girl was, I don't know what it was about her. She probably had a three second clip in this video as a video girl. And I like so fell funny. in love with this girl where I was sitting there rewinding the video, playing it again, rewinding it, playing it again until I could just watch her, bro. Like, like I'm talking about in love, you know what I mean? Like you said. Um, Did you have a name? Was there a name? No, for this girl? I never found out who it was. There was no, you know, back then there was no internet, bro. Like, I didn't know nothing. There was yeah. no, no way I could have found her. I just knew that this girl was just amazingly beautiful, bro. And um, I right, who else? I had bro? a little, I had a light crush on Jessica. I mean, Alyssa Manano, but you know, my biggest crush till this day, Jessica Alba, bro. Like, man, that's my friend, dog. You know, my boy bro. Cash and my boy Cash and the wife and her. I remember the day. Cash started dating Jessica, and I was hating, bro. Bro, but tell on, Cash no go disrespect. On. If they don't work out, man, <laughs> I don't care how old she is and how old I am. I'll treat that woman like the queen that she needs to be treated. She's amazing. Let me tell you She's... a funny story, Jimmy. We was going to New York like 11, 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. London was just born. We was flying first class to, to, uh, to New York City from L.A. We was on a Virgin Air. Virgin is now... Um, what the fuck is Virgin now? I forgot. Virgin is uh, Alaska. Sorry. So we was on, you know, Virgin was like the, the dope first class. We was flying. She was uh, two rows ahead of me. And I was sitting next to her nanny and her young daughter that was about right London's age. I mm. helped the baby out. I was making sure she's cool. She's like, hey, Ben, can you watch it? I was like, yeah, your nanny's right here. I'm good. She went in the bathroom, fixed herself up. She was going through it. She was having a hard time. She still looked good, by the way, bro. It was hella early in the morning. It was like a 6 a.m. flight. We get to New York. She's getting ready for the paparazzi to get her at JFK. But she's like, yo, Ben, I, I owe you a follow, blah, blah. She started following me since then. She started sending me honest products. And yeah, dude, Jessica's still bad to this day, dog. Jessica, if you're watching this, if you ever do, I'll be <laughs> everything you need me to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Jonathan. Jonathan Patterson writes, what's up, fellas? I'm John from Inglewood. I'm a big fan of the pod. This question is for Ben. With the news of Seth Binzer, a.k.a. Shifty Shellshock passing, do you have any memories with him or Crazy Town? I know Am was a founding member of that group. I know he's an L.A. dude and he's around your age. So I'm sure you guys have crossed paths. Um, Jonathan, uh, I ain't gonna lie to you. I knew Seth for 30 plus years of my life. Um, I knew Seth since he was a little kid when he was uh, running with Alan, 
who, who's the alchemist, and Scott Kahn, who was formerly um, James Kahn, uh, who passed away, rest in peace, legendary actor, uh, son. And, um, you know, they were in the hooligans, signed to uh, Immortal, and they are part of the um, Soul Assassins. And uh, he was in a video with them. He was rapping back then. It was one of his best friends, Bernard, rest in peace. Freck One, rest in peace. Um, I've known Shifty since way back. He was rhyming then and and way before he Crazy Town was even a thought. Um, I hung out with Seth a million times. Uh, the cover of the album for, not Get Some, what is it? Uh, for, anyways, I'm not going to get into it. But for um, Crazy Town's first album, that was his uh, his girlfriend that he was with for a long time, Cynthia. And I dated one of Cynthia's friends, Marina. So me and Seth, I have a hundred stories with Seth. You know, um, I will tell you a funny story. Um, Seth was like a Hollywood dude going out all the time, hanging out. Him and Homicide were cool. And uh, him and Cynthia, Lenny Kravitz was shooting a video. I forgot what the name of the video was, but it was one of his biggest singles. And they got like a small scene to be an extra in the video. And Seth was super hyped. But when Crazy Town took off, man, it was dope. Especially when Butterfly hit, you know, AM and all that shit, it was dope. But I knew Seth for a very long time. So rest in peace, Seth, man. Uh, good question, man. Um, next question is, uh, Manic Bengdu writes, what's up, gents? What are one, two principles of making relationships work that you have learned through your marital challenges? These are ideally principles that you'd like to instill in your kids for use in the future relationships. For example, emphasize on communication, keep building mutual respect, stuff like that. Um, thank you, Manek from Vancouver. Go ahead, Jimmy. You got anything from? I would say the number one thing is definitely communication, honesty. You know what I mean? Like this is the person, you know, when you choose to be in a relationship, this is the person that you're planning to, this is the person closest to you ever so this person should be able to know anything going on in case something happens to you they know how to take over and do what they need you to take care of that um number two um from my experience you know what i mean and, and i say this because i really honestly can say i don't know what a healthy relationship is like because i really never been in one but i know what an unhealthy relationship is and uh another thing i'm going to say is that um to always, you know, keep the relationship alive, even when kids get involved or problems, always, you know, think of each other, you know, find a way of how y'all can keep, you know, that 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 alive, man. Like, that's one thing I always try to Spark. do when I meet somebody is like, if, like, I think about things that I do and I tell myself, if I can't keep doing this for them, I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? Because I don't want uh, it to be a, you know, me keep doing it and they get used to it and I'm not able to do it again later. So uh, I say those yeah. are two of the most important things when I think about that. What about you, Ben? I'm just going to say real quick, you know, um, when you're with somebody for a long time, you do lack communication sometimes. Small talk is one thing, but real talk is another. Um, talking about your kids, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about your situation, right? Now, with me personally, I think at a certain point, I don't think that, I, I think that in my mind, I was my my wife's biggest fan not just liking her pics but just being like damn you look good babe you know boom whatever but i think if you don't have date nights if you don't have the certain communication if you don't really put her up on a pedestal every day or as often as you can and let them know um they start to get insecure no matter how pretty they are they feel like they fell off yeah. and that part of not keeping a spark alive maybe not even having sex enough, whatever it is, as hard as it is, you got to try to make that effort. You know, it's one thing to buy a bunch of gifts. It's one thing to say certain things. It's another thing to really look at that. And I think that that's where you lose sight. And, you know, once that happens, man, it's, it's all bad from there. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, next question, Joseph Rio Freer. Dude, hey, no disrespect. Some of you motherfuckers got some exotic last names, man. Shout out to y'all. If it man. ain't foreign, and it's I wonder if these motherfuckers. I think motherfuckers be making some shit up because they don't want to be fucking put on blast. But what up, y'all? Can either of you talk about the jewelers, jewelry stores that are promoted by travel companies and cruise lines? I've been on a few cruises and I always see these big stores, these big name jewelry stores that are outside the ships, um, ship docks promoting things like Crown of Light by Diamonds International and other brands that are said to be the best in the world. Are these legit best places to find quality? Or are they just another mall type jewelry store? 
I think I'm about to let so you answer that one. Diamonds yeah. International, Diamond International is a fucking enormous brand. Now, again, when I look at Diamonds International, I'm thinking of Walmart. Okay. Now, can you get top quality shit at Walmart? It depends on what you're looking for. When you're talking about like jewelry, I think that they're going to have everything you need up to a one and a half carat. Okay. And that's what the average, you know, remember 90% of the America, you know, of America or whatever, you know, of, of the country can't really afford to get a fucking two carat or even a one carat, whatever stone or VS quality and things like that. So these are just big brands that focus on mass production, focus on, you know, mall type stores and things like that. Are they the best? No, it's not at all. They just have great marketing because again, if you could sell 500,000 half carat diamonds a year, imagine the profit margin, right? Imagine if you own Coca-Cola and your profit margin seven cents on a can of Coke, but you're selling 15 million cans, do the math, you know? So that's just what they're making on. Their marketing is there. So they just go out there and do that. And that's people that did cruise ships. Remember, I've been on a cruise finally. That was, it was, I had a great time. Me, Nicolette, the kids went on a cruise and, it, and I love cruises. There. And my in-laws, they go on cruises all the time. For the average upper echelon, upper class people, they don't really go on cruises and stuff. When you have a family, it is a cool thing to do. Um, so they're, they're targeting a certain audience. Um, best in the world? No, definitely not. You know, it's, it's what it is. Even if you go to a mall, unless you're going to a high-end mall and there's a Van Cleef in there or De Beers or a Cartier, things like that, that's going to be even a different thing where they're just going to hit you with a brand name. You go to Tiffany & Co. and you go spend 500 to 1,000% over a really legit jeweler in a diamond district because that turquoise box. So that's what that is. We can go on to the next thing. I'm just going to try to keep sure. these going. We got a lot of questions, Doc. Um, Classic Kicks writes, how you gentlemen doing? If you had to switch lives and bodies for one day, what would be the first thing you would do and why? Justin, so I guess he's saying if me and you, Jimmy, had to switch bodies and lives for a day, well, you mm. tell me, Jimmy, go ahead and start. What would you do if you was, you was me living my life and my body? What would you do? What was the first thing you'd do? I'd go hit up Jessica Alba. <laughs> <laughs> And spend the whole motherfucking day with her. <laughs> That's it. She gonna be like, "Babe, what's wrong with you? You could, yeah, I just, you know, I just, you know, remember, you know, yeah, you know, just you should follow my 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 boy. He's like my brother. He's an amazing guy. Oh my god, man, that's a, <laughs> that's probably the best that dog, Jimmy. That's the best answer you ever given. That, you, you look at Jimmy, you, Ooh, spontaneous. It's um, hot in here. If I woke up and if I woke up in Jimmy's body and all of that, first of all, I would go fucking use one of my medical contacts and um. I would go talk to Jimmy, go on the phone, look at Dr. Abe, and I would find the best thing to cure the gout. Um, I would go ride around town, sliding, gripping grain, as they call it, you know what I'm saying, uh -huh. and and uh, find me a, a down south, you know, a bus down. Um, some of y'all won't even know what the fuck the bus down is. I ain't going to talk to you. It ain't no watch. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I would just go out there, do some barbecue. You know what I'm saying? I would just live my best Vietnamese South Eight, you know, South uh, West Texas uh, A Leaf style, and 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 that would be it, man. For sure, that'd be it. Hell yeah. Scotty with the ice has questions. Uh, good afternoon, Ben and Jimmy. I hope you had a great Fourth of July weekend. Jimmy, I hope you had a blast at Turks. My name is Scott with the ice jeweler from Austin, Texas, and Lab Diamonds have been growing popularity over the last year. I wanted to ask your thoughts on lab diamonds on stock custom pieces, not including for engagement rings. So you're just talking about stock custom, I mean, uh, doing, um, you know, making custom pieces with lab diamonds. And we've talked about this, Jimmy, you go ahead and speak your part of it. I'm, um, I've already said my piece. I don't fuck with lab you diamonds. You know, no, but. definitely. Like I said, you know, um, we, we don't offer lab diamonds or anything synthetic. We just only offer natural, uh, with me and my company. Um, and I'll tell you the main reason just why, and it's, you know, as, as a business aspect, you know, like, you know, some can say like, I'm tripping, I'm stupid, whatever, because it's a lot of money to be made. But one thing that, you know, when I became a jeweler, I knew that I wanted to do from my experience of seeing my jeweler friends, you know, deal with customers or what customers go through was that I just never wanted to make something for somebody. And they know that it was synthetic or whatever. And, you know, they go out there and rock it and then they get caught finding out theirs is synthetic. And then they go and blame me and try to say I did it without them knowing or I, I screwed them more behind their back. And it was just a headache that I told myself I didn't want to do. And at the same time, it's just 
lab diamonds don't hold no value. You know, you're saving money, but you're not because you, you, you're you paying less than what you would have paid. But once you buy it, there's no value to it. You can't sell it back. It's nothing, you know. There's absolutely actually, no naturally fucking. Diamonds. And by the way, nobody is going to make a custom piece. No one's going to make a custom piece with 14 karat gold. No mm -hmm. dumb fuck in their entire mind. They're going to do silver, plate it, do all that bullshit. If you making a custom piece with CVDs and lab diamonds on t even 10 karat gold, you are absolute dumb fuck. Because now you're yeah. paying the same amount of labor to set these stones on a fake diamond than you are on a fucking, or whatever, a fucking lab diamond, than a man-made diamond. It's for dumb. Real. There's no resale value. Let Definitely. me stop you and just whatever. But Scotty with the ice, thank you for the question. Um, Alon Co writes, Ben, Jimmy, uh, my buddy Kevin is in the same timeline as you. He just turned 35. He's accomplished. He's rich. He has supercars, all of that. He cheated on his girl and is lost finding a relationship. Do you have any tips for him? Man, don't be in a relationship, bro. Same timeline as you. Timeline you, me. What the fuck you doing? Like, you living good. You get money. There's obviously a reason why you cheated, man, because you you enjoying your life the way you Yeah, planned. you ain't you ready to be in a relationship. It. Yeah, you're not ready, bro. <laughs> so just be real with yourself and just enjoy it, man. Enjoy it while it is. And when the time comes, just just getting a relationship then bro like I, that's a lot of things like I, I i know some friends where they talk about yeah you know i was i was i was with him when he ain't had nothing now he got this he doing me wrong da, 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 da. and i'm just like you know what it's because at that time it's just you know he felt like he couldn't do nothing because he ain't had no money he let the money judge him who he was you know what i mean like there's that saying is like the true test of a man is when he has everything and the true test of a woman is when y'all have nothing you know so it's just like Enjoy your life, bro. You you getting it. You got it. Just do your thing, man. Yeah, go fuck until that shit's out of your system. Yeah. And maybe it won't be, and who fucking knows? If you want to have a family, then enter that with that mindset. Yeah, you got to sit back and that, think dog, about I mean, that, and, and, and there's sacrifices in everything you do. So you got to be ready to make that and sacrifice. And you ain't on the same timeline as me, bro. Like, yeah, you know, when I when I had cheated on my, my, my first fiancé, I've only been engaged twice, um, and obviously one turned to a wife, mm -hmm. um... I was 31 and I was immature as shit. And thank God. And it's so funny because I just talked to her like a week ago and um, she ended up fucking uh, getting a divorce, whatever. And she was too young. I was too young. And you learn. So when he, you know, but 35, he should be right on time. 31 and 35 is a huge difference with Ben. I'm going to tell you that right now. Definitely. 35 and 40 is even another difference. So there it is. Yeah. We're going to try to keep these fucking going, baby. Let's Nico, uh, Barudos, I told you with these motherfucking foreign names, man. Nico Barudos writes, Jen, Ben and Jimmy, this is Nico. What is the most significant challenge you've both faced when building as an entrepreneur? And can you share a pivotal moment in your career that shaped who you are today? You go first, bro. I mean, I feel like how many somebody who believes in you, especially because think about what you're building up and you have nothing. If you ain't even got $6,000 in your bank account, and you're trying to build something, why is anyone going to fucking believe you? So, you know, I heard a great quote the other day. I don't have idols. I believe in myself. And I was like, damn. I have always had to believe in myself. You know, I tell people, it's like, I don't know if you guys have this shit, or Jimmy, you heard this when you were a little kid or in the church, and so you got the person who's going to bake all the bread. And they're like, hey, you want to help me break the bread? Okay, cool. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, oh, you can help me? No, you know, so you have to go get the dough, roll it up, do all that, bake it, get mm -hmm. everything. Now the bread comes out and everyone wants the bread. It's kind of the same thing, man. Like you're on your fucking own. You know, uh, a pivotal moment that changed my shit was me deciding to, and again, this was by accident, me having a hobby of, you know, collecting sneakers and me being in the music business and me DJing. So I had like three different things of income. But the, the 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 sneaker shit was just to support my sneaker habit. I never looked at it as a major profit thing. It was for me to buy more sneakers. Why? I don't know. I just felt like there was an end game somewhere, but I was just obsessed with having kicks and it kept me, it supported my habit of buying sneakers, right? The pivotal moment was when I had, you know, Nike had told me basically, you know, like, all right, you're going to do this, this, and this, put me in a box and they're a billion dollar company and they weren't listening to how much influence I had. And then me saying, fuck y'all. Me saying, fuck y'all. And then me saying, um, you know, all right, well, how about fuck music too and fuck everybody? And then I ended up selling my fucking sneakers. And 
that little thing that I was building ended up turning into something. That was a pivotal moment because that gave me equity. That gave me capital. That gave me freedom. That gave me comfort. That gave me convenience. And people thought I was crazy buying all these shoes. I was on to something. I don't know, Jimmy, you got anything you could think of that was a pivotal moment that changed you when you was an entrepreneur coming up? Man, you know, I feel like um, it was always this this hunger I had in me and not even like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm destined for greatness or I'm meant to be a star. I feel like throughout my whole life from all the times of me hustling and doing what I do, it was just like the hunger to prove myself that I could do things that I thought I couldn't do because I used to always fight myself about what I couldn't do, you know what I mean? And it became a hunger that just had to be fed and I kept working and working. And I feel like having my kids was really like that real kick to make me realize what I needed to do and do it right. You know what I mean? But that's pretty much how I look at it. It was just, it was always a battle with myself. It was never a battle or competition with nobody else. All right. Uh, next question is Anton Sum. What's good y'all? Anton here. What would you do if you was good, good homies with someone, but every time you invite them to an outing, they flake. At some point, I cut them off. Just want your opinions. You ain't you ain't you good, go good with this motherfucker, bro. What you mean? No, do <laughs> you, like, you, you, you hear what I just said? <laughs> yeah, I heard I mean, you bro, said. you ain't good, good. I mean, go ahead, J Jimmy. Yeah, but I'm I mean, just, like, I, I guess if if it's every outing, you know what I mean. But it's like sometimes, bro. It's like y'all could be close as hell, but people go through shit, bro. You know what I mean? Like people. Sometimes people going through what yeah, they true. go through and they don't want to share and they might not make it to a couple of the outings or maybe this past year they ain't go to out as much. But does, how does that contradict or how does that say how y'all relationship be? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I, maybe I'm just speaking on I, personal yeah, experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doug, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm straight. Uh, Chris Bamford writes, I'm a 30 year old who's been pushing for a while. Uh, finally stopping, but uh, down on myself for not having a family by now. This one is specifically for Ben. Did you feel like uh, down on yourself for not having a family yet at 30? If so, how did you change that? Biggest goal in life is to have a family. If I can't have one, then I feel like life isn't worth it. Raising a Catholic family, oldest son in the family, shit's tough. Bro, you 30, dog. Or are you saying you are 30-something? I feel like most men ain't ready to have kids until, I mean, I'm just saying in general, like, most men are having kids in their late 30s, not early 40s right now. You got time, bro. You could be, you would be fucking, imagine what you was doing in 2019 and then what happened in this fucking, the, the spring of 2020, the world stopped. And then a year from there, life had changed and now we're getting back to normal, but things are weird and the economy sucks and I knew that already, but like, you just young. Bro, you would be, you would be, you could not imagine. I don't even think dating apps are the way to go. I think that word of mouth through friends, I don't know if you have friends or something like that, but you'll find a girl. Not everyone wants to have a family, but don't, don't be in a rush and don't also waste your time. There's a fine line between that. If you dating a girl and you see they ain't ready, whatever, get all the important shit out. And if they feel like you're too forward, then fuck her, but don't scare them, you know? Like, hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, it's nice to meet you. Oh, da da da. On the first date, like, hey, you know what? I'm trying to have a family. Uh, you want to get pregnant? You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah, know, you just gotta ease into it, bro. Well. You take some time, man. You gonna be good. Timing is Jimmy, everything, I mean, bro. Timing is everything, yeah. man. Be thankful that you ain't got no kids, as compared to you having kids with the wrong people, bro. Put it that way. Next question is from Justin Saint. What's up, man? My name is Justin. I look up to both of you guys. You guys always talk about some real shit. Last episode, you touched really quickly on what it's like being a girl dad. I myself have a son and a daughter and expecting another daughter in August. What do you think makes being a girl dad different? And how does your relationship with your daughter change as they get older? Well, I can only speak on the very beginning part. I can't speak on other. You got to understand that all your, that, that, this is just me you may have been a really decent dude in life and everything. I never really treated women very good before Nicolette. Um, and that's subjective to what she feels, right? Um, when I had a daughter, I realized there's going to be a certain way I want her to grow up. There's going to be a certain, you know, protection that I have against her and that I want her brothers to have for her. And she's also the baby of the family. So that right there, you know, obviously, you know, um, I think common sense should let you know, you know, she, she, you, you have to be more caring, more gentle, more gentle with people in, in general. You know, I think it changed my outlook on just life and being softer and more kinder with the world. But Jimmy, I mean, what, what did your relationship, how, how did it change with Vanna when she was, when she was growing up? 
first off, I want to say congratulations on the new daughter. You know, you got coming. Um, but I will say, like, parents and I'll tell you like this. Before I had my daughter, um, I never wanted a daughter. I used to always say that I just wanted boys due to, you know, my past and, you know, my relationship with my mother. So um, the crazy thing was during the whole time while Savannah's mom was pregnant, we would go get ultrasounds and they could never give me a 100 percent that she was a girl. Like they would always say, we think so. But the way she's positioning, we can't tell you for sure. Um, so not knowing she was really a girl until she came out. And um, it's it's crazy. Do Will I say like it's different? Like we really can't say it's just like, oh, it's so different as far as a girl and a boy. And I just say that because it's like every child is going to be different. Uh, as for me, as a parent, you always want your children to be themselves. Um, my daughter, I, you know, I raised her since she was three. So she was a lot of tomboy, a lot of things like that. Um, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of moments, you know what I mean? But um, every day is a new day, man. And you don't know what to expect, especially as they get older, you know, and they go through things. I will tell you an example. Of one thing, though, I remember there was a time, you know, she was getting older to preteens and she tells me about her problems. And, you know, I would sit there and be like, Oh, you that ain't no problem. You tripping. You know what I'm saying? That da da da. And you know, what I realized later is that it might not be a problem to me now because I'm older and matured or grown as an adult. But when I was that age, those things mean a lot to me too. So, you know, I had to catch myself every day. And 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 so I will tell you that what, what, what I'm trying to say is that every day is like you got to check yourself and make sure there's no routine. There's no um, when it comes to parenting, there's no um, schedule of how you do it, man. You kind of got to wing it and be quick to it for them to understand that you can be there for them without being judgmental, without reacting in a different way, whether it be good or bad. Um, it's a motherfucker. Like it's the saying is, and it takes a child, it takes a village to raise a child. It really do, man. Yeah. You know, and especially a female, especially 100%. a female that don't have, you know, her mom in her life like that. You're trying to be both her mom and her dad, you know, and that shit's hard, man. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, one of the craziest stories I'll say is like, I remember my daughter growing up and I used to have to bathe her. And I remember it got to the point. I'm, I'm one of them type of people, like, even though I'm your dad, I don't feel right touching her private yeah. areas and things like that. Washing real her. shit, real shit. And I'm going to tell you a story like, I remember when it was time to start teaching her how to bathe herself and um, I'll be washing her. I'm like, yo, I need you to pay attention right now. Okay. Cause I'm going to teach you how to wash your private area. And so what I did was yeah. I, I took the soap and I'm washing her shoulder and I'm like, I need you to pay attention. I think she was like four or five, bro. And I might get emotional even yeah. talking about this. Cause this is one of my memories, but I was like, okay, you see, you wash like that. I said, you feel the pressure. That's how much you put. No, do harder or anything, okay? And she's just sitting there like, I mean, standing there like, okay. And I'm just like, you know, it was it was hard, yeah. man. A lot of these situations, even when she had like a, she had a, a, a yeast infection or, uh, or some type of infection where she had little bumps in her private area, I used to make her mom come over and put the cream on her at nighttime because I didn't want to do it after she showered. And one day her mom couldn't yeah, show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, that's so I'm sitting there freaking out, bro. And I remember she's laying there and I'm just like, bro, what do I do? I forget that she looked up to me and she was like, dad, yeah, you got this. You could do this. And it's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a beautiful journey. You know what I mean? It's hard as fuck. Everything in life's hard as fuck, but it's worth it, man. And, you know, just take it as it come and just, Man, you know, every child is different. So just know that, you know what I mean? Just, you got just this, enjoy bro. it. You got it, man. That was some real shit, too, because I had to deal with that shit with Kai, too. And I don't want to look at nothing <laughs> and everything, you know, it's part bro, of just yeah, giving exactly, respect. And, and bro, also, like, they understand now even boundaries with their girlfriends. I'm like, no, Kai, you know, girls show each other this, but that, like, no more your brothers, no more changing in front of them, no exactly. more this and all that. And boundaries. London's got a motherfucking dick now. He's got his fucking balls in there. So I was like, no, 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 his mom can't do anything about it. Um, Matthew Rivera writes, what's up, Ben and Jimmy? Uh, my question is, what have you cut out in your life that significantly saved you a ton of money? Could it be certain bills or maybe a hack you did in payment plan, save you more money in the end? Let's hear it. You know, um, many times in my life, I spent credit card money that I didn't have and was financing. That was just dumb. So don't do that. But one thing that I can tell you is if you don't need to have multiple cars, get rid of them. <laughs> If you just done for the gram and everything else, just to get some girls, yes, get some pussy, sir. you doing the wrong thing, bro. Get one cool car, whatever, or get something. Don't have that be any means. When I cut all the cars out, that shit 
definitely changed. Um, Postmates is a big thing because you could run that shit up to three, four grand a month. Go out there and get groceries. Even though groceries are expensive, trust me, it's nowhere near because you'll still be able to make, if you could get some really good deli meat for $12, okay? And I'm talking about like a pound of roast beef or something, right? Go get some cheese. Go get a loaf of bread. Now think about how many sandwiches you can make. Then think about ordering something from Jersey Mike's or from Jimmy John's or from some way, whatever. It's going to cut down costs. It just will. No matter how much expensive it is, it's still going to be cheaper than going out and eating. So that's my little thing. I mean, is there anything else you could think of, Jimmy? No, nah, pretty much for sure, bro. Same thing, the cars, the credit card stuff, and the eating at home, man. Like I I actually, uh, about a year and a half ago, I basically hired my aunt, and she comes over on the weekdays and cooks dinner for me and the kids. And not only, number one, I saved a lot of money. Number two, it's like, it's fresh cooked meals and it's cultural. It keeps my kids cultural, traditional with the Vietnamese dishes. You know, the amount of money you think about it, you go eat in the family, anywhere you go, no matter what it is, it could be Chili's. It's going to be a hundred, two hundred dollars for a family of four. Um, you doing that twice a day, at least that's 400, five days, that's two thousand dollars. You know what I mean? I pay her and, you know, I pay the groceries that she cooks and I'm even saving money. So. You know, you just got to, you know, find where you can just really save money and it's it's worth it in other ways. You know, you gain other things like values and my kids are around my family more. We're closer. It's a lot of that stuff that's good. Uh, Justin Saint from Boston writes, what's up? My name is Justin. I got to know the answer to this question. Why the fuck do these jewelers in downtown Boston always have cheap ass Rolexes with no card ever? Only comes with an appraisal in a box. What's the deal? I got to know. I feel like something sketchy about that. I wish you were more specific. Um, there are real Rolexes out there that don't have a box or don't have a card. I mean, box is easy to get. You know, you can go on Chrono 24 and check the prices. You go on eBay and round off the last cheapest 20 that are on the market available. Don't go on high prices. People could offer a fucking, you know, a date just for $50,000. $50, that doesn't mean that's what it's worth. Yeah. Um, an appraisal, I mean, appraisal is something, but there's fake appraisals out there. Got to be careful of that. I don't know, man. Yeah, it, 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 you know, I mean, I don't like to buy Rolexes from a person that doesn't have a, a either a reputable business or have a name for selling Rolexes. And when I'm buying watches, I know enough to where, you know, I could have a fake watch buster if it looks too good. There's some really good fakes out there. But I'll go straight to a Rolex dealer and get that shit checked right there. I got my boy who owns it. He's an AD. And he'll tell me if something's off with it, whatever. They got a Rolex service center and they'll check it out. But if it's too good to be true, it is. It's not true. I, I think I like think what I just want to, I mean, I think, no, just a little to add to that. I think, you know, for what I got from the question, I think he might be talking about, because if you're talking about watches in general, like a lot, but there are a lot of like 36 millimeter Rolexes that are older models. A lot of them sometimes like the bands were fully worn out. You know, they put aftermarket bands in there, things like that. So, you know, in those situations, that probably that. If you're talking about like 41s and day dates and all that stuff, then that's a whole other story, like Ben's saying, for sure. Yeah, the yeah, no, there's reputable. 1986, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, bro, there's nothing you know? wrong with a 1986 day just. I mean, a day date. That, uh, yeah. You know, Nicolette, one of her first watches was a, was an 88 day date, and that 88 was a motherfucker. It's still hard to get. I remember I paid five bands for that bitch, and we ended up selling it for 15 later because I ended mm -hmm. up getting service and all that. My baby, was like a 70s shit. I ain't going to lie. So, you know, it's... The good thing is they look the same, but the forty ones don't look the same. That old. <laughs> yeah, here we go with the motherfucking names. New Don in San Jose. God damn. Uh, do jewelers have to follow copyright law, or can y'all just make pendants for whatever? Now, me personally, I am way too big, and I have way too big of a name now, and I can be sued. No. And I never really did before. We did a 7-Up can. It was cool. We did a Heights Mustard thing. It was different. We were in the hood back then. Um, no, technically, the, 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 the legal answer, no. Um, if you see me making m and championships rings because I have a partnership with M&Ms. You see me making a piece for fucking Live Golf. It's because I have a partnership with them. Snickers chain, it's with Snickers. I make the tricks. Rabbit, I have it. Um, yep. Even cause art pieces. I have it. Murakami, they own the IP to their art designs. They can put a cease and desist and all that. So no, you can't. You got a bunch of goofy motherfuckers are out there doing it. They don't realize I'm doing it for real, for real. So I don't think Jimmy needs to fucking even answer that. That's just a straight up yep. quick answer. Dr. Park writes, uh, what's good, Ben and Jimmy? When it comes to pricing, when is the best time to increase pricing for goods or service? Also, is it a good idea for 
to grandfather my day one loyal customers at a current rate, $385. I'm thinking of increasing it to 500. I'm a chiropractor for the Veterans Affairs and mobile and a mobile chiropractor. Um, I have over 16 years of chiropractic experience. I'm certified in MTBI, mild traumatic brain injury, CTE, um, whiplash, bio, uh, mechanics, sports industries, rehab with 98% success rate. I understand when you're starting on a business, the idea of marketing yourself because your name is what value is, uh, the, the equation, what is equated to. Also, I'm not the joint value rate, nor am I $100 per chiropractic adjustment. I would like to say I am the VVS quality diamond of chiropractors. Okay, John Park is my chiropractor. He's a good dude. I think it's the first time he's ever been on here. I think it is a great idea if you have guys who have been around for at least two or three years and they can get a grandfather rate of 385 and that's what it is. And then the other people, I think you should kind of play it by ear. If they look like they need the help, don't say it like that and be like, hey, listen, this is what I charge. You can start with that little spiel, but then that's what your rate is. And if you're busy, you're busy. And if you're not, you're not. So you have to kind of test the waters. But, you know, once you set a rate, that's your fucking rate, right? Some barbers charge 40 bucks, some charge 150. Really, it is about the quality of service. You've helped me out. You've done a t tremendous job on fixing my rib and going through that stuff. So it's like, you can't put a price on your health. And look, dog, stand on business. Is there anything else you want to say to Jimmy? No, nah, I think you hit it at the spot. Jonathan Margell writes, thanks for taking my question. I'm itching to go back to Japan this fall. Can you recommend which luxury hotel I should stay at in Tokyo? A couple unforgettable spots to eat and a couple side trips nearby. I appreciate your expertise. There are two hotels. My go-to has always been the Park Hyatt and the Grand Hyatt. Park Hyatt's in Ginza, which is like the Beverly Hills. It's more of a business district area. My go-to go-to was the Grand Hyatt in Rapongi because it's next to everything and I love it and there's a bunch of great restaurants there. Um, I'm going to be real with you. The addition now and the Amman are six-star level hotels. There's nothing in Japan that's fucking with them. This is a whole different level of superior luxury. I don't even want to know what a fucking, what the rates are. I would assume a tiny room is like a 250 square foot room is probably be a thousand a night. Let alone, I can't imagine what a suite costs. But if you ballin', then then go go ham. Because my friend Chris L. Lim just stayed at the fucking uh, edition. It's crazy. When me and Cuddy were out there last, uh, we were at the the, uh, the Amman, and it's just next level, a one. Now, as far as uh, unforgettable spots to eat, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't even know the names of all. Uh, there's 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 places I've been to, twenty times that I don't even know the name of. Um. You got to just walk through parts of, you know, Rapungi, parts of Ginza, um, parts of uh, through um, Harajuku and things like that and just kind of trial and error, right? I would avoid the American food if you could, but I would try McDonald's out there. McDonald's is worth trying out there for sure. I'm being dead ass serious. But Katsu Sandos, you know, 7-Elevens have good little snacks here and there, but there are some really, really good Yaki Niku Sparts and some really, really good sushi spots. I've rarely had a bad meal out there. Most of the places, I have no idea what the name was. It's fully in Japanese, but I've had just great meals out there. I'm sorry. I don't know, it's Jimmy, you, you have any idea about Tokyo, but I've been there 40 times. I've never just, been. That's so the real talk. I'm glad you got me. I'm going to keep that in mind. Okay, Matthew Jennings writes, what's up, Tito Ben and Primo Jimmy Boy? My question to y'all is, did you see that new Tank Davis piece with the skull pendant that turns into a belt buckle as well? The necklace turns into a chain for like your keys and connects to the belt loop. I thought it was pretty dope. I can't remember the jeweler's name, but what do y'all think of it? Mateo from Coachella. I never saw it. You see it, Jimmy? I seen it. Um... My boy Stephen Victor just texted me, in fact, during the fucking show. Um, he manages Tank. I don't know. I would assume it was what, either Alex Moss or Elliot. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. No, it was uh, Jury Unlimited. Did, did, did. Uh, personally, okay. I, I, I didn't like at? the way the skulls look. They're out of Atlanta. Um, skull look, skulls look very cartoonish. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it was a bad job of, yeah. you remember Jim Jones' skull necklace? Or was that uh, Jules Santana? It was Jim that had it, right? They both, they both. Jim and 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 uh, and and Jewels have both had Jewels both had skull had gang the, chains. Uh, Super it was dope. a rosary style, and 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 um, he had the six skull gang. Yeah, and, and you've then, seen the uh, way I do Jim's, skulls, bro. I don't fuck around. 
Yeah, like I, I personally. Now feel I never like, heard of that store before, but I'm thinking I did see. He been doing a lot. Of Wafi. His name is Wafi. His name is Wafi. Okay, he, he, well, he does a I've lot of stuff. I seen the dudes. I seen Gucci Mane promote a 34 karat diamond, bro. You already know. Yeah. We already know what the deal is, bro. Like, you, you know, know what I'm exactly. saying? So like, if you nah, promote that, then I'm not yeah. messing with HPHT. He's done some good C stuff. Fucking, um, yeah. I seen to do some stuff for Lotto that's nice. Things like that. He be doing his thing. I met Wafi, man. It's it's love, but definitely honest up honest opinion. The skull definitely didn't look didn't look right. I like the idea with turning into a belt, wallet chain, all that, but the skulls I feel like needed to be done better, man. Like execution. It needed to look more like skulls, man. It didn't yeah, it looked like a baby skull. It's really funny, man. Um, well, we'll get into it in a second. Uh, there's something I want to end the show with. I want to make sure. Um, but guys, next time we do fan questions and in the comments on YouTube or in the email, tell us about what you want to see more on the show. We haven't hit the heartbeat of the show yet. There's been a lot of dis disorientation going on between me and Jimmy. Not in our lives, but in our lives. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's hard when we go on. We want to spit game and kind of just feel our 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 catched you know the, the the not the vibe but really what this show is about and it's hard because i'm going through a real bad legal battle right now and jimmy's going through a, some personal issues but that's no excuse we still hear spitting but just tell us what there's more things you want to see on the show some people are saying oh, i want to see btb again well i'm gonna throw that back in here we got guests you see what we do with renee that's nothing we got shit with real people with celebrities and other people that want to come on we'll get that going Definitely. um asuke tanio tanioka writes ben and jimmy appreciate the game question out of your kids who do you think will be the first to get married who will be the last jimmy most recent three uh have you guys caught your kids sneaking out yet as crazy as it sounds i think kaya might be the first one right maybe london i don't know Ryder seems like he's a player so i i, I don't know man i think Ryder be the last uh london's really shy you know so it, it, it's too it's too hard to tell right now for me Jimmy, you Definitely. got any idea about I, that? I feel the same way. None of my Jimmy's, kids have snuck out. They're too young. Jimmy, Jimmy is shy. If if you want to speak on like the shy person, maybe get married first. I say Jimmy probably get married first, but I don't I don't see that. You know what I mean? And as far as sneaking out, no, not yet, man. Like, you know, Jimmy's done some things where he he grabs the iPad when he ain't supposed to without asking. Uh, but besides that, you know, ain't been no sneaking out, especially with Vanna. You know, she's at an age we communicate very well. You know what I mean? And as long as she handling her business, I always tell her like she can do what she want to do, basically. And, you know, so she pretty much asks me all the time, you know, without me ever saying no, unless she just not, you know, got things she got to handle or catch up on before she can go do that. Another question from Ian S. Uh, Ian from Cleveland. Will you buy your cards at, six, at 16? And if so, will they be? Um, I've asked my kids this question. I've talked about it on the show. I've talked about it before. Um, they don't want to fucking drive. My nieces are 22, 23, and they don't have a license. They live in New York, and they don't want to drive. They're, they're in an Uber thing. My nephew is 19. My other nephew is 18. They don't want to drive. I think they drive my brother's, um, either the Benz or the minivan. They don't care. Uh, Ryder and London have no desire. But if they did, <laughs> believe it or not, I would get Ryder something like a fucking Jeep. You know what I'm saying? Like a Wrangler or something, right? I would get London like a Tesla, like a Model 3. That was cool. Um, if they really want something dope and they were doing really well in school, cool. Kaya, it's different if she's the girl. You know, Kaya, I would like to get her like, you know, a real nice three series BMW. If, uh, you know, to start out with or something like that, maybe, you know, uh, a nice Benz. Not a one series, not a two series, not an A class, not a B class. I would get her like a C and something that's the upper echelon. Um, I would try to keep it under 70K for their first car. And that sounds a lot, right? But, uh, Something like that, you know what I mean? Maybe a cool little SUV. I don't know, Jimmy. What about you, man? Definitely, Vanna. She always had wanted like a Jeep, you know, and or she wanted a little Miata. Um, but when it came down to the car thing, you know, I was I was blessed. She she was just happy with whatever. Uh, the reason why I chose her to get her a Range Rover Velar, I felt like it was. Um, she's a girl, you know what I mean. I wanted a car that's more solid, you know what I mean, and I felt like that was something decent for her and something she could enjoy and not really it'd be too low on the road and things like that um as far as jimmy jr man he's 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 been talking about this for the last five years he said his first car he wants is, is a aventador 
I guess by the time he that age, the Aventador would be a lot cheaper, <laughs> so I ain't tripping. But if he keeps saying Lambo, I really don't know. He, his plan, bro, is he wants a Lambo at Aventador, and he's planning to fish and drive around and fish for his life. And the way he's going to make money, he's going to sell the fish that he catches, and now he's just going to live like on the outdoors in this Aventador. <laughs> Uh, Gabriel Kane writes, what's up, Ben? I know you being in the jewelry in the game and know, knowing all about it and having had many watches. What is your overall opinion about the G-Shock, Audemars, Piguet, um, all metal, silver, gold model version of the watches? Not that I want one because it looks like an AP, but because it's a little different in style, a look in general for a G-Shock. I know you have a custom black one. What do you think about the other AP style models? Been a, a day one listener. Um, bro, look, I don't need to impress anybody anymore right? With Rolexes, Paddocks, and APs and everything else. I love my Cassioke. This is a Gerald Genta design. Um, you know, they range anywhere from $100 to $300, $400. I think the metal ones are different. Um, shout out to my boy JP Store in uh, New York that's doing these, uh, the, the dope-ass fucking metal versions of them. I mean, they're cool watches. They're great. Casios tell great time. They're inexpensive and they look good. Um, some people may think you're trying to fake it here and there, but I love Jason. They're just a quality watch for for cheap, and they're cool. And you know, I do a little eye style buckle on on the on the plastic ones. You know, um, the metal ones are really cool. I have one. Uh, they're 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 good. They're affordable. Like, and you can stack. If you have a really nice watch, you still want to watch that wear that just to be out because motherfuckers are getting jacked. Jimmy, you got an opinion on those Casiokes? They tight, bro. They are real cool. But you know what I seen recently? Um that I really like. They made this Casio G-Shock. I think it's called a Banga. The, uh, yeah, the Banga theme. Limited edition, bro. Casio G-Shock 2100. Where it's like all white and it looks like they drew a Sharpie on it. So it don't even look like a real watch. This shit's gangster as fuck, bro. Like, I think I'm going to get one of them. They come in a blue and a white. And a white, bro, it looks like, you know, that that artwork that they do. That where it's like... It with a sharpie, like it looks like a piece of paper you're wearing, but it's a G shot, bro. That's just fly as fuck. You see it? Um, it's a oh, sorry. GA twenty one hundred manga theme. Yeah, twenty one hundred. M A N G A. They got a white one and they got the blue one. Manga is, is anime. Oh, that shit's hard. In fact, you know what? My that's my I'm boy Joshua you. Beads. Bro, see what's up. That's my bro. boy Josh that from Visa so designed that. Hard, bro. My boy Josh, my, yeah, my boy, my, my boy designed that. My boy that shit's that. hard, bro. Um, Aishi or Aishi M writes, "Hey Ben, my question is, how do you process understanding your own fate in a situation? For example, handling a breakup or career change. When do you start feeling like this is fate, and now I must act like this or that to move forward in life? I mean, <laughs> if you get fired from a job, right?" and you're a doctor, does that mean you stop practicing, you know, being a doctor? You start practicing, you know, medical shit? No. I mean, um, if you get fired from Burger King, you go get a different job. Um, it depends on the context. I'm sorry. There is fate. Yeah, it, you, a breakup is over. Um, this is some good advice, I think, with the breakup. If a breakup happens as a breakup, you can either be friends and be cordial and not whatever, but this is what I personal advice. If there's a breakup, as hard as it is, the longer you linger or bounce around or pussyfoot through shit, the longer it takes to get over something. Mm -hmm. The more you act as if it was a death and you just move on and push forward as hard as it is, you're going to think about things that remind you of shit, but just keep going. If it's meant to be, it come back. But that's your fate right there. It's over. Go move on. There's 8, million peop 8 billion people in the world. There'll be mm -hmm. someone out there for you and have that mindset that there is going to be someone for you. Don't take it like you bad goods or damaged goods, everyone is entitled to reinvent themselves unless they're out there being a pedophile or some scam shit or some scumbag shit or something like that. So, you know, I think it's always good to move forward in life. Don't sit For still. Sure. Don't go backwards. Especially if and you, you, you were in a relationship. No? Yeah, especially if you was in a relationship and you was getting hurt and everything. That means the fate was for you to stop letting yourself get hurt and, and do for you and love for yourself. You know what I mean? And, if that person is fate or someone else is, that's what fate is for that. But you know, you gotta you gotta be strong and move on. You know what I mean? That's just the that's just the plain truth. Uh, Ty the Kicks writes, um, "What's up, Ben and Jimmy? Looking to get my first nice watch. I got about 10, 12 bands to spend on it. What would you buy? Rolex, Hubo, uh, Mueller, Cartier, etc. If any of those specific model. Thanks, Tyler. 
you know, honestly, bro, if you got about 10 or 12 bands, bro, I would try, me personally, I would try to get a ceramic um, bezel, means 2008, 2009 or newer, pre-owned Submariner or GMT, all stainless. I would get a sub date. If you don't care about a no date, actually people don't like, it's actually a hot watch. I would do a lot of shopping around. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you get a really, really find a solid 2013, 15, 18 or something, if you can find a solid GMT Master 2, all stainless, Oyster or Jubilee band, I personally like the Oyster band better on a sport, on a big sport watch. If you can get one of those, bro, that's a great first watch. Submarine is a great yeah. watch. I wouldn't do a Datejust, even though Datejusts are up because the Rolex, that shit's back down. Motherfuckers, that's just the entry level on their spectrum that they just do. A GMT or a Submariner date is going to be your best fucking bang for your buck. Try to find one under 10, save the rest of the money, and you got money in the bank. You always going to be good and get in and out of that bitch. You got any other advice, Jimmy, for that or no? Nah? No, that, that's perfect. You know what I mean? Perfect. And if you ain't no rush, go to the Rolex store, go to AD, buy a brand new, even better. You know, this is a question I think we should answer. And it's something I'm not um, well versed in. I don't think Jimmy is either, but I think we should answer it because I think that, that we have our own takes on this. And I think we'll go one more after that and we're done with the show. AI and the future of entrepreneurship. Sean Wilson writes, hello, fellas. Thank you for your time to answer the emails from people who look up to you. Super appreciative. My question is with AI dominating and threatening people's jobs, as well as aspiring entrepreneurs, how would you two experienced leaders of entrepreneurship handle today's ever-changing world of AI? If you were brand new and just starting out, what are some things to look out with AI and some things I could leverage with AI to make it an unbelievable amount of bread possibly? Also, what are your thoughts on AI in general? Is it good? Is it bad? I guess things are bound to change. The only thing that's constant is change, in my opinion. I'd love to hear both your opinions on the subject. You know what? Again, I'm not very well versed in AI. Um, besides, like, you know, chat GPD and stupid shit like that. That's whatever. It's not stupid. But the thing is, inevitably, you know, robots, AI, and things are going to take over the world. But at the same time, you can prep for it, but they won't. Now, if you are a one-of-kind individual... It can't take over what you do. Now, again, we ain't talking about robots playing basketball. We're not talking about, you know, things that are doing like even AI making jewelry, whatever, cool. But as far as what you bring in the knowledge, that's where it comes in. You're saying starting out, so it's different. I can't speak on that starting out. I'm talking about me. And it's hard for me to go back and think about me knowing nothing. With everything that I know now, I know AI can't do what I do as far as like, you know, my mindset with certain things. Now, what can AI do for you? If you don't know anything, you could do a lot because you could fucking write in, in, you know, in, um, what's the other fucking, uh, the other fucking, uh, Grok, sorry, G-R-O-K, right? Grok and other ones like that. Um, you could use it to your advantage. All right, guys, guess what? We lost Jimmy. So I'm going to answer one more fucking question. I don't know what the fuck happened. His internet's fucked up. He's in Houston. They lost all their internet. Um, I'm going to fucking pick one more thing. I'll do two just because. It's fucking crazy. Uh, Notorious AJG, Anthony from Chicago, writes, Cool your band. Do you follow any K-pop groups? Uh, what's your music experience? Have uh, Has any K-pop label approached you for help? Um, yeah, dude. My boy Teddy, my boy YG on YG Entertainment, my boy Jay Park. You know, Jay Park's a big K-pop dude. Um, he's fucking last single on his last album was fucking, he had one of his second single was Ben Baller. Um, I fuck with Big Bang. Blackpink, I know all the producers, I know BTS, I know Got7, uh, and all these people, they've reached out, they've done things. Um, I got reached out by Blackpink to do something for next year, uh, possibly the end of this year. Um, I've helped these guys with style, with so many different things, connecting people with producers, whether it be DJ Muster, whether it be with YG, um, YG, the rapper here from Compton. Um, people help me, you know, all the time. A, a lot of the K-pop people, they all know me, especially the, the bigger people in there. Last question, and I'm about to end the show. Um, it says, hi, from India, Ben and Jimmy. What does a typical day in your lives look like on weekends and weekdays? You know what? I'm going to finish this question. I wish Jimmy was here to answer it. Um, typically, when I'm with the kids, I wake up around 5.30. Let's just start a regular day with the kids while the work, you know, with, with school and everything like that. Uh, wake up about 5.30. Um, I start prepping them for the day. Uh, 6 a.m., I start getting breakfast ready. Uh, London likes waffles with chocolate chips. Kyle likes waffles with chocolate chips. Ryder likes pancakes. 
and then uh, two eggs. So I get there, breakfast ready. I have my coffee. I get up. I check if anything on my phone is really important. If not, I'll check that shit later. Um, I wake them up at 6.30. They eat breakfast. They start getting ready. I'll start watching some sports center. I watch Get Up and I watch, um, what the fuck? Not just Get Up, but the, the Stephen A. Smith show. Um, Jesus Christ, first take, sorry. And then uh, at 7.15, they start getting dressed. They start getting ready. And then um, by 7.30, we're out the door, get them to school. And then from there, after I drop off at school, basically, if I have time, um, about once or twice a week, I'll go hit uh, city golf and hit balls, get the dispersion, you know, um, get my golf reps in, all that stuff, go home, take a shower, and then go ahead to, you know, my factory, go check out the work, go do all that. Do not talk about the factory at all. Do not talk about the jewelry shit on on, on Instagram or anything. Um um, I'm not transparent about that at all whatsoever. Then basically, you know, my lunch happens and whatever. Um, get all that out the way. Any meetings I have to do, I get it out of the way. And then I um, head back, pick them up to school. And then, you know, Ryder either has jujitsu, London has golf, and then Kai has dance, depending on the day of the week. Now, on the days that I don't have them, those are the days that I go golf. And the reason why I golf is because, one, it's a big part of my income. So I do that. On the weekends, you know, I let them wake up around 7 8 a.m. Breakfast, of course, all that. Then I set a day up for them, whether we go out and play golf, whether we go see a movie, whether we go and hang out and we have our family time. If I don't have them, then me and my girl will go out and hang out and kick it and just chill. And it just repeats throughout the nighttime. You know, the kids are in bed by 8 45, 9 o'clock. I probably go to bed around 11 30 or midnight. So that's pretty much what a, a typical day with me looks like. Guys, um, that is pretty much it for fan questions. I, I don't know what the fuck happened with Jimmy. I pray to God this shit didn't get fucked up. Um, just wanted to say again, please subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button. And I wanted to end the show by saying this. Okay. Got to have that magical quote at the end every time. This is not your practice life. You know, all that stuff and everything. Okay. Right now. And remember this, right now, there is somebody out there that you helped telling other people that you're a bad person, okay? Just remember that shit. Know where you are, know where you stand, and always stand on business. I will see you guys next Friday. I appreciate y'all. God bless. Love. We out, y'all. Hit the subscribe button, y'all. I know what the fuck happened to Jimmy. Hurricane hit his ass. That we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we set the price This life that we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we setting the price, let's get it